Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to be here today to uh, give you an update on the Soul Gold story. Uh, Soul Gold are a Brisbane-based company, and we're listed on the London and uh, Toronto stock exchanges. And we have one of the most exciting pro programs in the world, both at Cascabel, our flagship project, and the, all the rest of Ecuador. So in Ecuador, we have a major footprint. We have 3,200 square kilometres of ground, and this is the most unexplored piece of the best copper belt on Earth. I feel like I've been taken back 50 years in a time machine, plonked in northern Chile, given 86 geologists, and said, go and see what you can find. Our, the opportunities we have are, are completely unparalleled. We have an entire pipeline of porphyry and epithermal projects right across the country. Um, Ecuador has a, has a very strong um, uh, impetus to build their mining culture. They've, the government has declared that mining will become the second pillar of the Ecuadorian economy. At Cascabel, we've been drilling ahead with 12 rigs for the last year. Our maiden resource statement, which came out in January of uh, this year, that was based on 53,000 metres of drilling. We're now up to 150,000 metres of drilling. Um, our, our maiden resource uh, estimate came in at 1.08 billion tonnes at 0.68% copper equivalent, which contained 5 million tonnes of copper and 12 million ounces of gold in the inferred and ind indicated categories. We're looking to double that. So our exploration target is 10 million tonnes of copper and 24 million ounces of gold. We're targeting the high-grade core, and it's growing as well as the overall resource. Uh, we're very well funded. We have uh, some, some strong shareholders on the register. Newcrest and BHP have both joined. They're not joint ventures. They're both shareholders in Solgold. They both must follow the board's recommendations of Solgold. So they're shareholders, not joint venture partners. Some of our new... Um, projects, uh, epithermal projects, so we really have a focus on gold at the moment. We have a world-class porphyry. Uh, we'd like to complement that with a world-class epithermal, but we do have other porphyry targets as well, so it's the land of the giants in Ecuador and there's a lot to find. We started life in the Solomon Islands. We were called Solomon Gold. Um, we looked at a map of the world and we decided the best place to go was the Andes. That's uh, where the big giants are. Uh, the Andes uh, produces 50% of the world's copper. Chile, the number one copper producer in the world. Peru, number two. You go north, Ecuador, there's no mines. There's a couple in development, but no big mines in Ecuador yet. We plan to change that, and uh, we're strongly focused in Ecuador. If we take the geology of Ecuador, if we, uh, sorry, the, the size of Ecuador, if we superimpose that on northern Chile with the same geology, we cover 25% of the world's copper. So that's, that's what we're dealing with. That's like I say, put me in a time machine, take me back 50 years, put me in northern Chile with 86 geos on the ground covering over 3,000 square kilometres. I'm sure we'll make some discoveries and that's why I'm very sure we'll be making more discoveries in Ecuador. There's the Eocene belt. The two best porphyry belts on the planet are the Miocene and the Eocene. We have them both in Ecuador. There's Cascabel there in red at the moment. It's continually moving upwards on that diagram as we increase our tons. And we can see there Chukicamada, El Teniente, Escondida. There's no reason why there should not be um, porphyries of that size in, in Ecuador. The difference is we've been drilling here for five years. Some of those have been drilling for 50 years. In the case of Chukicamada, it's been in production for over 100 years. So Ecuador is very young, it's covered in jungle, it hasn't been the most popular place to explore, and that's why we've advanced this so quickly from a stream sediment anomaly just five years ago to a tier one world-class discovery at Cascabel. Uh, here's our share registrar. As uh, we currently have a market cap of about nearly 700 million uh, pounds, still very undervalued uh, considering what we have. And you can see there our biggest shareholders, Newcrest, DGR Global, which is a company uh, under Nick Mather, and BHP, uh, three of the biggest shareholders there. So one of the great strengths of this company is the board of directors. Uh, they're all very highly invested in the company. And the other great thing is they really support their people on the ground. I believe no other company would have found Cascabel because nobody drills 1.5 kilometre holes in an exploration program. Th uh, this board of directors did. 
we took the risk. Not only did we take the risk, we did it in a downturn when every other company was closing their doors, sacking their people. We went to Ecuador and drilled the deepest holes in the world. That's, um, that's why we found this. Uh, we have some other outstanding uh, people in the management team. Dr. Steve Garwin, he's a, a porphyry guru. He's the best porphyry geologist I've ever had the privilege to work with. He uh, leads our program, builds our team. Uh, ben Whistler and I have worked together for many years. He's uh, a very accomplished large, large data set manager. Another important addition to the board recently is Craig Jones. He's Newcrest block caving expert. Um, Ecuador is booming. Um, in 2012, 2013, when we found this thing, people weren't very interested in going to Ecuador. That's completely turned around thanks to the government's uh, improvements in the fiscal and regular, regulatory regimes. And the government expect Ecuador to become, uh, mining to become the second pillar of the economy. They're predicting that they want uh, four billion in returns in 2021 from mining. That has attracted uh, some of the, the biggest and best mining companies in the world to Ecuador. We can see there um, Hancock Prospecting, uh, Fortescue, uh, the second biggest landholder in Ecuador behind Solgold, BHP and Newcrest, of course. They're there in their own right, as well as uh, being shareholders in Solgold, Anglo-American, London, First Quantum, and many others. Just around Cascabel, Cascabel's there in red. You can see the sharks circling. In blue to the south of us is Hancock. Um, in green there is Newcrest. The ones in brown are Solgold projects uh, under Carnegie Ridge Resources, which is a 100% owned Solgold subsidiary. Um, Cascabel is held by ENSA, which is uh, Explorations Nova Meaning. That is 85% owned by Solgold, the other 15% by Cornerstone. And Cornerstone are debt funded up until production when they have to contribute their share of uh, spending. One of the, the great uh, advantages of Cascabel in particular is its logistical advantages. If uh, this deposit was high and dry in the Chilean Andes, it would be fantastic, but it's even better here because these are the things we don't need to build. We don't need to build roads, port, airport. Uh, hydroelectric power stations. There's abundant communities nearby. It's at easy, easy to work out elevations. This is going to cost. Uh, this is going to save us about three billion when it comes time to build this mine. At Escondida, they spent three billion just for their desal plant. We don't need that. There's abundant water, and um, it's going to be. These numbers are going to come out in our PEA. We have our preliminary economic assessment underway. That'll be out in January. Just skipping through fast, we started here with um, ma uh, magnetics. We found many anomalies, a lot of smoke. We followed that up with multi-element uh, geochemistry, assayed for 48 elements at very low detection limits. Here's some of our uh, most interesting data sets. The cluster of uh, highs in the, in the bottom there, if you look at the central image, that's molybdenum. That's my favourite data set. That's a cluster of porphyries down there. That's Alpala. That's where all the drilling's been done at, at uh, that's where the resource has been found. We've done a couple of holes at Aganaga. But just at Alpala there, we had some of the, the longest, richest drill holes in history. In fact, that's, that's a list of the top 30 holes ever drilled. We have 10 of them. Uh, we have more than that now. But 10 drill holes over a kilometre at or near 1% copper equivalent. And within these one kilometre drill holes, there's very rich uh, portions within it, which gives us multiple development opportunities. There's our maiden resource statement, 1.08 billion tonnes at 0.68% uh, copper equivalent. If I take a 0.9% cut off and above, you get 220 million tonnes at 1.45% copper equivalent. So you can either target that or you can target the, the overall porphyry. We've been targeting the rich stuff. Um, drilling costs have come down as we move more rigs in. There's the high grade, looking at plan view. So in black, you see the, that 220 million tonnes at 1.45%. In red is the recent growth. Black was uh, discovered on the basis of 50,000 metres of drilling. We're now up to 150,000 metres. So you can see that's growing substantially. Also notice uh, Trevino in the north in hole 64. We possibly hit another limb to this porphyry. It's 200 metres north of the, uh, the rest of the high grade. That's what the bulk tonnage looks like. In black is our 1.08 billion tonnes. In red is what we've grown since, uh, since the maiden resource statement was put out. 
and that's what it looks like in section. This is all cohesive, it'll all come down in a cave, very robust. That's what some of our, um, our leapfrog uh, model looks like, looking at it from various angles, looking north, looking east, looking south and looking west. Black is our maiden resource estimate, red is the growth. And that's what some of the core like looks like. We have kilometres and kilometres and kilometres of this stuff. Um, there's some rocks out in the booth if you'd like to come and have a look. Most of the, the mineralisation to date has been in the chalka pyrite, but we are finding an increasing amount of bornite, which is very good because bornite has double the copper grade of, of chalka pyrite, as you know. We plan to develop this as a block cave. It has a, um, a minor environmental um, footprint in a block cave. We like that development style. This is a cartoon. The real uh, plan will come out after the PEA. Okay, copper, there hasn't been many discoveries of late. Uh, the, the line graph there shows exploration expenditure. The, the histogram shows discoveries. So you can see even during the 2011 to 2014 period, as the world was throwing more money looking for copper, we just weren't finding them. So discoveries have dropped off. There's the biggest copper projects in production. Um, you can get this from our website if you can't read it, but basically, Cobre Panama, OU Tolgai, extensions, even with all these big mines in production, we can see that by about 2020 to 2023, we start to be in deficit. And unless we come up with more discoveries, I don't know where people are going to get the copper for their electric cars and hydroelectric power stations and wind power and solar panels. There's some places we can get it from. Um, Cascabel, our exploration target of 10 million tonnes of copper would make us number five on that list. With uh, just another four million tonnes more than that, we'll be number three on the list for copper as the biggest uh, greenfield projects in development in the next 10 years. And a nice little byproduct there will be the biggest gold development in the world as, as a byproduct with 25 million ounces of gold. Uh, if that wasn't exciting enough, I'm even more excited about this. Ecuador is untouched. As I said, 86 geos on the ground covering all across the country. We're making discoveries weekly. The, those three in red are epithermals. The others are porphyry targets. We have 10 high priority targets already. Uh, we've hit everything we can here at world record pace from stream sediment anomaly to world class discovery in just five years. And that's why we're exploring so fast and we're being we're making so many discoveries. Here's some of them. Blanca is an epithermal target, just uh, eight kilometres north of Cascabel. It's, it goes up to 600 grams gold. Uh, Rio Amarillo, about 25 kilometres to the southeast. Uh, it's a, an enormous lithocap, up to 60 grams gold there on surface. Some fantastic porphyry discoveries in the south. La Hueca, there's six porphyry centres there. If I go and stand on them, they look better than El Pala looked before we drilled it. We haven't drilled yet, we don't know what's uh, below the ground, but we'll, we'll definitely be testing them very soon. A couple more, Cisne Lohar is another epithermal, and Port Veneer, another porphyry target in the south. They just keep turning up. And one of our biggest strengths as well, and our main focus is the community. We've always operated well with communities. We had great success getting into every, every community we ever tried to get in in the Solomons, many that uh, people hadn't been able to get into before. We uh, do complete consultation at all stages. We have over 450 employees with only 3% um, of those are expats. During the um, construction phase, we're gonna have thousands of people and we've already engaged uh, Loha University to build a branch of their university on site at Cascabel. We'll be training the local communities in all aspects of construction, uh, all sorts of trades to, to give them the skills that they need. Environmental monitoring is also paramount to our success. Health safety meetings every day. We have uh, two full-time doctors on site. Um, and uh, we, we have a tree program. We've grown and given away over half a million trees. And there's a brief summary of what I've said. I'm out of time. I'd like to thank um, our fantastic team, the board of directors, the people of Ecuador, and most of all, I'd like to thank our local communities uh, who let us operate in their land. This is their project. Long after I'm gone, this will be their project. Um, this gives them opportunities that they would never have had. They don't have to leave their homes and go to the city to get a job. They got one here. Thank you very much.